train hard, recover faster, faster, and bring on the gains with recovery systems. And your host, Coach Mike on the mic. Hi, it's Coach Mike on the mic. Uh, welcome to For the Love of Exercise. We're in Auckland, New Zealand at Trust Serena, uh, where we're on duty here with Recovery Systems at the Ignite Sevens Rugby Tournament. Joining me is Richard Harris, Coach right. Development Manager for Auckland Rugby. Welcome, Richard. Thank you, Michael. Good to be here. Yeah, lovely to be here. Now, we, we have quite a few folks out our way in Asia that are, uh, follow us on the rugby and our recovery systems customers and users. So they'll be really interested in, in, uh, in our discussion. Cool. First of all, um, what brings you to the Ignite Sevens? Yeah, so I, I work in a role as coach development manager at Auckland Rugby. Um, but bringing me here is uh, it's sort of with a hat of coach educator. Right. So we've got coaches here taking uh, various Ignite Sevens teams. Yep. And and probably a layer that they want to add from previous years or last year's uh, program is um, sort of education over the coaches. So the coaches go away with some real value added, uh, as well as the players. Yeah. Rightio. So Ignite Sevens. Let's just explain what this is about for uh, for the folks that are watching. So what's the concept of Ignite Sevens? Yeah, to me, it's uh, my understanding is that it's uh, uh, Red Bull coming in and, and delivering a, uh, a, a, a um, upmarket, uh, exciting product in sevens, and, and New Zealand's jumped on that as well. And from a New Zealand rugby perspective, it's a, it's a program that they've seen that they can do some pretty wide TID in the. In right, the seven space. Right, so talent identification yeah. for the future. Yeah. So uh, some some really good uh, components. Uh, so let's talk for a moment about um, Auckland Rugby. Yep. And uh, hopes your hopes for the next twelve months. Yeah. So a pretty exciting time with us at the moment. Um, yeah, Auckland Rugby's the biggest provincial union in New Zealand. Yep. Um, and, and it's a, it's a big machine, and it's getting those cogs working efficiently. Yep. Um, sort of my role is to help our coaches as best I can. So that includes about fifteen hundred coaches. Uh, I, I work in the senior level, so about half that. Yep. So it's, it's delivering what they need in a in a community space. Right. Uh, but also work in the high performance space, which is working with our representative teams. Right. Um, um, from down from minor ten and storm down to our sort of 14s, under 14s, so that so whole. So 1,500 right. coaches is, uh, is a, a very big yep. workload. Um, a lot of countries um, that uh, back in our home base, around our home base in Asia, there's a lot of countries that wouldn't have 1,500 players, let alone 1,500 yeah. coaches. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's really quite amazing. Let's talk about the Auckland Blues for a moment. So they've recruited some superstar talent with Bowden Barrett and a few other folks yeah. this year. Um, how do you reckon they're going to fare? Yeah, so, yeah, Blues is, um, is, uh, will we'll be looking forward to, uh, to improvements on previous years. Um, I've always thought that what, what gets history says in Super Rugby that... Uh, Positions eight, nine, ten are critical. Yeah, and so this is a definite move in recruitment in a young space space in previous years. Yeah, yeah, as well in, in those areas, but also with Bowden coming in, there's a real view to to getting some world class players in those positions. Yeah, history says that of those three positions, you know, if you've got uh, two of them are world class and all three in form, you're going to go a long way in the competition. Right. Yeah. So an obvious uh, recruitment policy there to address yep. what works in Super Rugby. So there's, uh, there's another very interesting question mark over New Zealand rugby. Who is going to get the coaching role for the All Blacks? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, become, that's become very streamlined very quickly, hasn't it, with uh, Dave Rennie uh, committing to... Um, sorry, uh, yeah, Dave Rennie with the Wallabies now and Jamie Joseph staying in, uh, in Japan. It's become a very streamlined, maybe a two-horse race, possibly. 
Yes, possibly, and it, and it's yeah. You know, I can only speak for my own job too. You want uh, when we're when we're looking to recruit in a representative coach space. What what are we looking for? Yeah, we're looking for the best uh, within the system, uh, an incumbent for right. want of a better term. Yes, and, and yeah. you're looking for what else is in New Zealand. Yeah, um, that that stacks up against that, and and what what's overseas. Yeah, so you can see that New Zealand rugby's gone going through the same processes that that you know good organizations do in that sense yeah and you just measure up the three and they've probably got down to to as you say maybe it's got down to a two horse a race yeah. pretty quick. A, a lot of a lot of that and and in your role as well as about the i would imagine about the life cycle of you know where the greatest development needs they'll be different for different countries yep. uh where we're just starting to establish the basics mm. uh in in new zealand it's really in particular with the All Blacks, would it be fair to say it's now a journey of the marginal gains? You know, it's uh, yeah. the basics are pretty well catered for. W- would you think that's a correct statement? Yeah, I think there's real value in it. You, you, we talk about in New Zealand rugby about the, the six pillars in, in technical, tactical, uh, physical or S&C, mental, nutritional and sort of holistical leadership. Yeah. And, and, and we're starting to really... New Zealand's great in a system that we always share our knowledge. It's, it's different to a lot of other places in the yep. world. There's no kept secrets. So because of that, it's a growth model. Yeah. But we're, we're possibly starting to top out in a lot of those, yep. in a lot of those areas. And so it's areas where, where you, you, your recovery systems work in, uh, in between performances. So yep. gains and performances are, are, are starting to top out. Yeah. And, and to me, it's like, uh, so we perform, we, we rest and recover, and then we perform again. And it's probably in this rest and recovery where the biggest gains can now yep. be made. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. I, I see it as a real little place that can be really developed. Yeah, we find that to be uh, comments coming back from athletes from lots of other sports uh, who have said exactly the same thing to us. They can't train, they've, they've maxed out in their training uh, they can't train anymore. The quality of the training's uh, as good as it possibly could be. But every one of them said to us they could improve on their recovery and they could improve on locking in those gains a lot better. Yeah, I, I think is there's a yeah you know, to me the big areas is that area and the other areas of course is mental and all the yep. all the psychology and stuff that goes around with mental preparation yeah. and, and healthy living even absolutely are, are the places to make gains in these days now we had a really good chat earlier and uh we we discussed some really good points about what it is to be an athlete in a small city in new zealand like yeah. dunedin mm. and how much easier it is to connect properly with your teammates and the community because of the relatively low pressure on just physically getting around now here in auckland that's a different story yeah. tell us about some of the big city pressures here in auckland yeah it's, it's, it's i'm always conscious that it seems like an excuse but we, we, i reckon there's really valuable in, in in sort of informal chats what we've been doing for the last couple of days yeah, i reckon yeah. there's some real gold dust in that yep. not, not only in a playing sense playing connections and, and but also even in the coaching, you yeah. know, coaching, you know, talking about the game, but also talking about and getting a feel for around relationships. Yeah. And, and in Auckland, that, that 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 gold dust, that informal opportunities is put under more pressure, where we're forever looking to go from training and get back home or get across town for something else. Yeah. And having to dodge traffic, dodge, and get yeah. going, or, or hurry to get inside a traffic window and correct. And, yeah, yeah. And it, and it seems, yeah, the advantage is that there's a, a bit of a double-edged sword. You makes you better prepared. You have to organise yourselves around time. But we're missing those informal moments. Yeah. Where where we connect as people. Yeah. And. and you see those more apparent in in, in environments that are uh, there's not so many more there's not so many people. Yeah. yeah. So for those of our, our viewers that want to understand uh, in, in Asia that want to understand what is Auckland traffic like, um, I would compare it to uh, Bangkok, Manila, Jakarta traffic. Um, not necessarily on the worst days in those cities, 
but it's pretty constant that that uh, you know going to work window and, and coming home windows pretty reminds yeah. me a lot of those big cities where uh, a lot of our um, a lot of the folks watching will identify with yeah. the horrors of that and, and what it does to your, your available time and space. Well, we're just about, we're at day three at Ignite Sevens. Yeah. Um, have you seen some exciting prospects? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, yeah, I've been over the coaching and mainly watching some coaches in the female space. Yep. But uh, also watching the, the, the boys test yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some real talent, as, as you, you expect, uh, you know, coming, coming from across the country. And uh, some real challenges for the, for the TID staff on, on getting measures, but also getting uh, not only quantifiable measures, but qualitative measures yeah. on, on, on athletes. So yeah. a real challenge for them. So run, run through what some of those uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, measures, or what sort of things you're looking for. How are you, how are you measuring some of those things? G give us a rundown on uh, you know, what you're looking at. Yeah, everyone will have a different sort of perspective on it and put different weightings on things. You know, your quantifiable measures are, are you know, around a lot of S&C stuff, around, uh, you know, how fit they are aerobically, yep. how fast they can move, agility, and, and then you're starting to get into things like core skills in our game, yep. Yep. how well they can execute a pass under pressure and whatnot. And, and, then, and then, but there's also a sort of a, a, I look for a sort of a qualitative Thing and those those sort of intangibles around character, and, and, and also which a lot of is, is societal driven and environment driven, around toughness and, yeah. and durability, those yeah. things as well. Yeah. Cool. Now you you touched on a really good point. Uh, you were watching some women's rests. It's great to see the women's game developing from strength to strength. Yeah, it's the biggest growing area in New Zealand rugby. Yep. Is, it, is our female space. So we've got a lot to be grateful for with rugby being an Olympic sport. Yeah, I think, I think that's really taken, yep. re really uh, engaged uh, the, the, the teenage and the youth population that, yeah, yeah. that, that the, an Olympic dream can be achieved yep. through, through rugby sevens. Too. And with the, uh, um, yeah, I watched some of the Australia um, Black Ferns games yeah. this year. They were amazing yeah. games. Yeah, I, d I just watched uh, two weeks ago the, the games semi-final um, New Zealand, New Zealand, uh, United States, and then the final United States Australia. Yeah, and, and outstanding games. And yeah, you can see where the level of the women's game is is just growing, growing so quickly. Uh, that's terrific. Well, uh, for us, we're involved in a lot of different sports, so we're really grateful to have a mm -hmm. chat with yourself. And we're involved, in, as I mentioned, in a lot of different sports. It's a great opportunity for us to really have a glimpse into New Zealand rugby. There's no, uh, the, the, you know, the, there's no accident that New Zealand rugby has been uh, you know, on top for many, many years when we see the detail mm. that uh, in, in both identification of talent and also the training uh, and uh, every aspect of a player's development is very well catered for with a very professional setup mm. with folks like yourself. So we're really grateful cool. for you to share uh, what's going on, particularly here in Auckland. Yeah. And uh, we'd like, we're also very grateful for, for a lovely for some lovely weather today. Yes, yeah, <laughs> hopefully it continues into yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, tournament day tomorrow, so uh, yeah. it all comes together and we're very excited to be part of this. Thanks very cool. much, Richard. Thanks, lovely to meet you. Brilliant. Cheers. Okay, Coach Mike on the mic, over and out for now.